Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be looking at a difference equation that is that explains a discrete system, specifically this difference equation. And what we're interested in finding is the zero input response, which is when our input f of k is just zero for all time, uh, and the zero state response, which is also called the impulse response, uh, which can fully characterize this any uh, LTI discrete or continuous system. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to work in the Z plane. We would like to work in uh, the Z transform plane because uh, just like working in the Laplace domain is easier for continuous functions, working in the Z plane is easier for discrete functions because it allows us to just write simple transfer functions. So the we're going to exploit the fact that the Z inverse operator is a time delay of one step. So if you have an input y, an output y of z, and you multiply it by z inverse, you just get in the time or in the uh, discrete time plane, you get y of k minus one. So not y of k, which you would normally get if you just took the z transform, uh, the inverse z term of y of z. You actually have to shift it back one because of this z inverse operator. So what we do now is we are going to make a quick substitution for n equals to k plus 2 in our difference equation because that will allow us to use these z inverse operators and see how to make the substitution very, very easily. So rewriting this, we get y of n minus 0.6 y of n minus 1 minus 0.16 y of n minus 2. Whew. Okay, so, uh, and then on the other side, we end up with 5 y of n. Switch for, uh, yeah, f of n, apologies. f of n. So now it's very easy to see that if we want to exploit this fact that when we take a function into the z domain any time shift is just represented as a multiplication by z inverse, um, we can make that substitution very quickly. So the z transform of y of n is just y of z. Then constants are preserved in transforms of linear transforms, which a z transform is. So we, here we get y of z because we're transforming our function y. And then there's a time delay of 1, so we get a z inverse. Again, the constant is preserved through the z transform. We're transforming our function y, so we get y of z. But then there's a time delay of 2 here, so you get z inverse times z inverse or z inverse squared. negative 2. So on the other side you also just get 5 because constants are preserved and then we're transforming our function f of n to f of z. So even though we made this substitution this, this, uh, this z transform of the difference equation holds for both the original and this. They are the same, they would both have the same uh, Laplace transform, or Z transform, apologies. So now if we want to write a transfer function, H of Z equals Y of Z over F of Z, this is fairly easy because we can separate out our Y terms and we can separate out our F terms and then just divide and we get what our uh, transfer function would be. So we separate out the f terms on top and we get 5. And then on the bottom, we end up with 1 minus 0.6 z inverse minus 0.16 z inverse squared. And if you want to write this in a better way, because we usually do not like to work with second orders, we usually like to work with uh, two first orders multiplied together, we end up with 5 over 
1 minus 0.2, uh, I guess it would be 1 plus 0.2, z inverse, and then 1 minus 0.8, z inverse. So that should be right. You can check that for yourself, that multiplying that out works out. But so now we have our transfer function for this discrete system represented by the difference equation. So now we have all the information we need to get these two values here. So the zero input response is actually easier to work with the difference equation to solve. So our initial values here are that y of negative 1 is equal to 0 and y of negative 2 is equal to 25 over 4. So these are like your initial values for differential equations problems or for Laplace transform problems. So what we end up with is that we can have the, uh, the time shift operator pulled out and what we get here is that uh, we know our inverse Z transform of this with a zero response. Uh, the modes of this system are going to be 0.2, negative 0.2 to the K. Um, plus 0.8 to the K times some constants C1 and C2. And we know that this is going to equal to our output Y of K. So this is specifically for the zero input case. What you would get is you just get this difference equation equal to zero. So you know that you'll end up with something whose modes are these guys. And that it'll eventually have to equal to zero at different times. So at time negative one, we plug in negative one. Uh, if you plug in negative one to the k variable here, what you're going to end up with is negative 0.2, which is negative one over five, to the negative one. So I guess we should write this at k equals negative 1. This is going to be negative 5 c1. And then over here, this value, 0 0.8, is also 4 over 5. To the negative 1 is 5 over 4. So we get c2 times 5 over 4 is going to equal to our output at time 0, which we said from over here, uh, at time negative 1, apologies, at time negative 1, is zero. Neg negative one is zero. I messed that up. Um, so this is one equation, two unknowns. So we can't solve that and that's the reason we have the second initial condition. We're going to do the same thing but with k equal to negative two. So in a similar sense you end up with negative 25 c1 plus c2 times 25 over 16 equals, over here we get 25 over 4. So if you solve this, you can do it in matrix. So it would, if you want to write this as a matrix, it would be negative 5, 5 over 4, negative 25, 25 over 16. And then you would augment on the end, or you could solve this with the, the inverse method as well. Um, zero and then 25 over four. And so you can row reduce to solve this, but what you find is your answers is that C1 is going to equal to one over five, and that C2 is going to equal to four over five. And this is called the zero input response. So that means that if you have zero input, your output, so if f of k 
is equal to zero, then y of k is going to equal to one fifth times negative point two to the k plus four fifths point eight to the k. And that should work for all time. So that was our zero input response. Now we want to work with our zero state response. Our zero state response is what is called the impulse response because we assume that f of k is a delta function. So in the second part of this problem, f of k equals delta k. So what we know, uh, if you remember from continuous cases, that the inverse Laplace transform of your transfer function is the impulse response in continuous time. The, similarly, the, inver the inverse Z transform of a transfer function in the Z domain will give you the impulse or zero state response in the time domain, uh, or, in the sh or in the shift domain, whatever you call it, uh, with Ks in the discrete time domain. That's a fine call, name for it. Um, so what we're going to end up wanting to do is taking the inverse Z transform of this function down here. So what we end up with here is we would want to do partial fraction decomposition on this. So doing so, we should end up with, uh, we want H of Z to equal to some value A over 1 plus 0.2 z inverse. And then we would want some function, some value b, over 1 minus 0.8 z inverse. And so now you have to solve what these a's and b's are. So you get that a plus b should equal to 5. Uh, you can solve partial, differ, uh, partial fractions any way you want. This is the way I'm going to do it is by equating coefficients. So I'm going to multiply this on top and bottom over here, and then this on top and bottom over here, and say that the numerator has to equal to the numerator over here. So the coefficients of the constant coefficients are a plus b, so those have to equal to 5. And the other coefficients are that 0.8a plus 0.2b have to equal to zero because there are no z inverse terms over here. So this gets that, this gets us that a equals five minus b. And you can substitute that in down here where you get negative four over five, that's 0.8 times 5 minus b plus 1 over 5, which is 0.2, b equals 0. So simplifying this terms, these terms here, we get negative 4 minus 4 over 5, b, uh, that would be a plus because you have the minus 4 over 5 out front, uh, plus 1 over 5b equals 0. Or if when you simplify it finally, you get that b is equal to 4. And if b is equal to 4, then a is equal to 5 minus 4, which is 1. So you can finally get that this h of z is equal to 1 over 1 plus 0.2z inverse plus 4 over 1 minus 0.8 z inverse. So these are things that we can very easily take, I'll, I'll box this in over here so that you don't get it confused with anything. So you can very easily take the inverse z transform of this. These are forms that we know. When you have something of the form 1 over 1 plus a constant times z inverse, or particularly the normal form is minus so a constant times z inverse. When you have a minus in the middle, it's just that constant to the k. 
So that's what happens, that's what happens up here. That's how we got from here to here. Um, and this is a plus in the middle here. So you end up with a minus 0.2 there. So what we finally get for our output when our input is a delta is that y of k should equal to our first term, which is minus 0.2 to the k. And our second term, which is 4 times 0.8 to the k. And then normally when we deal with systems, they're causal because it's impossible to make a non-causal system. So you would normally multiply this all by u of k, but we've already shown that this is a non-causal system uh, because it actually, I take that back. It is a causal system because it only depends on current time and past time. So you would have to multiply this all by u of k, but this problem's a little weird in that it gives you outputs for time before zero when you don't have an impulse response. Uh, I would assume that these are specifically for the case where it's a zero input, but again, that wouldn't make too much sense. Um, but this would be the system impulse response uh, H of K. So that's how you get the zero input and the zero state response. Um, hope you guys learned something and have a good day.